Hey, y'all, welcome back to this episode of Redefining Hustle, Pursuing Success as a Christian Woman. This month of June 2024, my series is all about finding harmony between ambition and faith. And I have some really powerful guests, especially today. I am so thrilled to welcome our guest today, Kelly Tyann. Kelly is the founder of Addicted to the Climb. And when we titled this episode, I thought, we are addicted to Jesus. We are addicted to the climb. How did the two of those things go together? And that's what we're going to talk about today. So Kelly, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so excited and feeling blessed already to be here. Awesome. So Kelly, start out, tell us a little bit about you, and then we're going to dive right in to our topic today. Okay. Well, I am just, like you said, a lover of Jesus. I am addicted to the climb with Jesus every single day. And I've really just dove into that over the last four years in my coaching. I used to keep my coaching and my business separate. Mm -hmm. And I was a fitness, I had a fitness business for 11 years. And then after COVID, I just said, you know what? God was speaking to me and saying, why aren't you talking more about me to your people so they can climb higher? Because you're addicted to the climb. Let's get others and take them and pull them up so they can have the peace, the joy, the fulfillment, you know, cast a vision and see it happen and do that all with God. So I stand on five words and this kind of sums me up. It, it, it all starts with God. That's it, period. It's very simple. I believe I live the simple life in a way that, yes, I'm busy. Yes, I have a lot on my plate. I coach, I speak, I do trainings, I, I write books, I podcast, but it all starts with God. And when you have that as your mindset, you can do all the things with the harmony like you talked about and the balance and feel fulfilled all at the same time because that's the God we serve. He doesn't want us stressed and hustling and running circles because I did all that. <laughs> right. All done. I'm all yeah. done. Uh, I love that so much. Tell us what, where did the idea of addicted to the climb come from and what does it mean? Well, I was driving one day about five, six years ago, and I was listening to a podcast because I love listening to podcasts. And the one one of them was interviewing the other, and I don't remember the whole thing, but somebody said, well, we're all addicted to something. And I remember stopping that for a moment and thinking about it. What am I addicted to? This expert was saying everyone has an addiction. And then right away, I'm like, I don't have addiction to drugs or alcohol. Like I can have one glass of wine and be done. And I've never struggled in those things that we think are the addictions in life. However, I realized over the years and course of my life that I am addicted to the climb of life. I'm addicted mm -hmm. to persevering. I'm addicted mm -hmm. to never giving up. I've realized I've started four businesses. I failed. I've done all the things wrong. I survived breast cancer. I, I thought my life was over. All the things that led me to where I was in that moment, yeah. I realized I am addicted to the climb. Mm. But the climb is faith. Mm. So for me, I saw my mom, who suffered with rheumatoid arthritis my whole entire life, just put her makeup on every day. The girl was crippled from head to toe, but she had a smile. She had faith. She had hope. She persevered every morning when she woke up with her Bible in her hand. And I said, wow, this is who I am as well. And so Addicted to the Climb was born. The phrase, I didn't really know yet you know, the depths of what my messaging was, but I knew that I had a message to help others get on their climbs, mm. but let's bring faith into that so they can feel that hope and have that peace that no matter what life throws at us, no matter what failures we think we are or have had, that God can make a way. Yeah. And so that's been what Addicted to the Climb has been all about. And it's been evolving since four or five years ago, the messaging behind it. Yeah. One of the things that, you know, I talk about on the show is the redefinition, redefining hustle. Mm -hmm. So, I, so uh, you know, I'm honest and transparent. So when I first, when we first connected and I heard Addicted to the Climb, I immediately went the way, here's my human thinking. Oh, the climb, the struggle, 
the constant going, the getting to the next level, the next, the more, the things. And that's why I'm so glad that you define it, right? Because again, it's, it's the redefinition of how, how the Lord brings these things forward, right? There's no accident that he gave you that, right? Mm -hmm. This is the message he wanted you to bring forward. I love what you said. It's about being addicted to the perseverance, even the resilience, even the tenacity to get up and keep moving for his glory, right? Mm -hmm. Your Mm -hmm. mom is such an incredible and beautiful example of that, Mm -hmm. that she kept going. Mm -hmm. And we know because Jesus tells us that life is not going to be fair, that we will be persecuted, all the things. And how do we keep going? We keep going in Holy Spirit power. So thank you for redefining that. Tell me, how do you help people put their arms around that and step forward in the climb? Well, I really work with women on their identity piece. I think that's a big piece Mm -hmm. of it Mm because I know for me, I thought I had to be someone that I really wasn't. I was always chasing another identity. For an example, I was a fitness owner for 11 years. I have I had won four national fitness championships, okay? So I had a label on myself. Mm-hmm. And I always felt I had to be perfect. Oh my gosh, what if I gain five pounds? Oh my gosh, well, I'm this champion in fitness and now I'm eating like a normal person. And I, and I was struggling so much until I really put on the identity of Christ and who I was, that's where I really stepped into it myself. And then I said, wait a minute, if I didn't know this and I grew up as a Christian, there's so many women out there that are just, they're a mom, but that's not, that's part of who they are, but they're a child of God. And when we really, really take that in and really know that deep in our spirit, then we can do a lot more than what we think we're capable Mm -hmm. of. So I help women in business. I help entrepreneurs. I help women in leadership really step into first who they are as a woman. What gifts do you have? Maybe you're not trying to be the president of your company. That's okay. God gave you special gifts. Maybe it's your voice. Maybe it's the way you communicate. Let's find that gift and let's develop those so you can run that business, so you can be the leader of your life. Maybe it's just being a better mom. Maybe it's zoning in on what you're good at. Do you have a gentle spirit inside Mm -hmm. you that you can speak well to your children? Let's just, let's strengthen those things. And that's really what I work with women on is seeing the goodness of God that we serve a limitless God. But we put limits on ourselves so much. I'm like, Mm -hmm. even myself, and I'll be so real with you today because I don't have it all figured Mm -hmm. out. I'm always like, oh, I don't know if I can do that. You know, I I question myself a lot in the things I'm stepping forward into. And and I'm like, wait a minute. I serve a God who is limitless. So my potential becomes limitless because he's living inside me. And if I have faith and I trust him, then I am going to take that next step. That's and go right. for it, even if I fail. And that's mm-hmm. okay. Yeah. So these are all the things I really work out with women. I I love just, I, I guess what I always say about who I am, I speak life into women because yeah. my mom spoke life into me my mm-hmm. whole life. And I realized if we're not constantly speaking life into ourselves, the separation becomes wider, bigger, deeper. Yeah. And we fall into the traps of what the world is trying to tell us, show us, and, and prove to us that we need to do and be. And mm. it's exhausting. It's so yeah. tiring. I was yes. there. I know what it's like. It's yeah. tiring. And it's it's frustrating. And you get and I cried and I was sad. And I'm like, I can't do this. So living right. peacefully with the Lord, and you know, it's not, it's not about perfection. Mm. And, God's not going to come in and abracadabra. Here we go. Let's let's just make everything just perfect, and you'll yeah. hit your goals and lose the weight. Like that's not how it works. But yeah, he yeah. gives you strength. He gives mm. you the the ease, the gentleness to know. Oh, I messed up. It's okay, daughter. Right. You can go for it again. You're not done. That's it. That's it. A couple of things that are coming up for me, Kelly, as you're saying this is number one. Back to that identity piece that. If you, even if you grew up and you've known Jesus, uh, 
that you get to deepen your personal relationship with him mm -hmm. and that the world is so loud about you're a mom or you're a wife and you're the yes. Okay. Yes. But it's really about understanding who he calls you to be as his precious daughter. Mm -hmm. And so whether you've been a Christian your whole life or you're newer to the faith, like me, it's, it'll be 10 years in October. That personal relationship is so key because as he changes where you're positioned or as he changes the season that you're in, in your life or business, he, he's going to shift some things. You yes. are always his daughter. And so I love that. The mm -hmm. second thing that, that came up for me is um, that, that you recognized that not everybody knows that and not everybody can embrace with grace mm -hmm. the failure or when you fall, right? And that the Lord never leaves us right. in that. So how do we, how do we harmonize being addicted to Jesus and being addicted to what, what the climb may be for us so that we're, we're staying focused in, in where he's leading us. And we're also pliable enough to allow him to change our direction. Well, I think it all comes down to really being grounded in the word mm. because that's where it all starts. Yeah. You know, God has a blueprint for all of us. And I believe that all of our blessings can be unlocked within the word. When you are getting yourself in the word, what does God want for me? What are the principles that he's laid out for our lives? Then that word comes alive in you and you come alive in new ways every single day, every single week. I mean, it for me, like I said, yes, I've grown up a Christian. I, when I was 10 years old, I know Jesus, but I'm still learning Today, this morning, I had an awakening about unlocking more blessings in my life. And that's the beauty of walking in faith with the Lord, that it's a beautiful journey that, you know, we, we're on. We're, I'm committed. I say another phrase of mine is, I'm chasing after God. I've given up chasing after everything else. And I'm fully chasing after Him because I know there's more for me, for you, listener every single day when you chase after him he will That's surprise right. you with beautiful opportunities he'll shut doors when he knows you shouldn't go inside those doors even though you think you might want to go in the door so that's the power of getting in the word in knowing you know who this god is right. if you're if you're just stepping into faith is reading about him to learn what he has for you i mean yeah. it's it, it's amazing that when you open up the Bible mm -hmm. and read the same thing for years, you still will learn something right. new that he wants to tell you or unveil to you or reveal to you in a new way. Isn't it so fun? It's amazing to me always, you know, that that you, you'll you have that one scripture that is your go-to, yes. right? And then the one day the Holy Spirit will illuminate an, a word. Yes. Maybe you've seen the word, but he gives you the new meaning or or it mm -hmm. speaks right into your situation. And that is how much he loves us, mm -hmm. you know? Oh, so but good. I think sometimes as high achievers, we have a hard time. Like you said, you kept your, your coaching and your business separate. Like we have a hard time harmony, harmonizing those things because number one, I think we're sort of afraid to let go, right? Because we want to control it all. Mm -hmm. um, and we're also a little bit afraid that he might take us in a different direction. <laughs> when you began to uncover um, the, the message the Lord had given you around being addicted to the climb, what are some ways that you saw him shift your business or your thinking or your trust uh, that then opened new doors for you? Can you give us an example? That's so good because that's exactly what happened to me. I was afraid to go all in with God because I'm like, okay, I feel you calling me to use mm -hmm. your voice more. I love you and I want to talk about you, but I did it in baby steps. I was a I was, I was still hanging on sure. to, yeah. you know, well, I'm the fitness girl. Cause this is when I was transitioning out of fitness yeah, and into more wanting to just coach women in a different way and bring faith into it. Right. But I, I, I didn't go all in at first because mm -hmm. I wasn't I was hanging on and, and then I realized what, what am I, 
I'm hanging on to something and I'm keeping it from others Mm -hmm. that benefit from this message that I have so they can let go and they can start chasing after their dreams in a different way. So I don't know if that's answering your question, but you got me thinking about back then and I was so afraid to just say, okay, let's do this all in because I hung on, I let go. And then there just came a moment. And I remember the feeling of feeling so free. Mm. I just kind of went on social media and said, you know what? I love Jesus. And I was petrified to say it, but I did. And then I started attracting the people that Mm. wanted to hear from me more and more. I lost a lot of people to be honest with you, I did. It was scary, but stepping into, I knew God had bigger and better plans for me. Yeah. And I knew that I wanted his plans over mine. That's right. I said I was sick of doing it the other way. Yeah. I, I never felt I achieved enough or like you said about us being ambitious women. I just, I always felt, am I not doing enough? Am I, mm. it, you know, I was chasing all these things and mm-hmm. then I finally let go and it was almost like I didn't make a million dollars at first, like I'm not making a million dollars, but I I knew in my head that path was going to be way more fulfilling. The impact I could make was going to be way more fulfilling than trying to chase some unrealistic money or whatever else it was that I was chasing. So Mm, that's so good, Kelly. Thank you for being so vulnerable to say that you were afraid. Right. Because the thing sometimes when we have people who are connecting with us online, you know, you and I hang out a lot on LinkedIn um, or wherever they see our journey. And even as vulnerable as we can be in in our posts, they still think like, oh, well, yes. this must have been easy. And, and it's never easy. I love that you use the word ease earlier because there is an ease to doing things the Lord's way. So thank you for being vulnerable. I wonder because the Lord is so faithful as, as we, you know, first dip our toe in and then put our whole foot in, and then we start walking. Can you think back, take yourself back to that point where you finally were like, I'm done doing it this way. I'm going to go that way. What is one of the first ways that you saw the Lord? Um, I don't want to use the word bless, but you saw the Lord go, ah, yes, my daughter, and boom, maybe it was a door that opened or an opportunity that opened or a client that came to you. What is one of the first ways that you saw him respond to your obedience? Probably when I had my first coaching client and I realized, because I put it out there that, you know, I'm changing the way I coach. Of course, fitness is part of my coaching. It's one of my pillars because being healthy and whole Mm -hmm it all goes together, healthy and whole in mind, body, spirit is how we become whole, you know, and and find our fulfillment. So that was part of it, but it was my first coaching client when the breakthrough Mm -hmm. I saw in her that, you know, seeing Jesus as her Mm -hmm. father, as her daddy, as a forgiver, Mm -hmm. as a peacemaker, her life just changed so Mm -hmm. drastically. And I knew right then that, there's more out there that there's more women out there who need to feel this kind of freedom mm-hmm. that they've mm-hmm. never felt before. So I knew I was doing things his way. Yeah. He's the, the first one, then the next one. Right. And I said, okay, okay. I'm locking arms. We're partnering up. We're doing this together. That's right. And it was just the most beautiful experience. Cause I knew, you know, it's almost like you, when you know, you, you know, you know, yeah. Yeah. And until you experience that, you're sort of like, what does that even mean? Like, yeah. I'll know, like I know, but you will. I mean, it is a whole, you talk yeah. about like whole person fitness and spiritual mind and body and soul. Like it is a whole feeling mm-hmm. in every pore of your yes. being that yes. you know mm-hmm. you have just stepped into his best for you. Mm. I and love- that's addicting. Yes. And it's a that's addicting. And I, I always say to myself that the best investment you can ever make is investing your time with God yes. because what comes out of that investment, oh my gosh, like st- stand by because right. you, you can't even imagine the, no. the, the supernatural things that can happen in your life, just in your mindset alone. Yeah. 
you know, the way you, the way I used to think compared mm-hmm. to the way I think now, right? My gosh, it's like yeah. I wish you could go back, but you can't. You can't. But I wasted a lot of time just thinking the negative things, and I'll never. I'm not. I'm not. En- you know, all those things, and God just showed me so differently. Just being just submitting to him and surrendering. Yeah. It's a beautiful way to live. And, and he redeems all of that time, right? Yes. Like he yes. knows, he knows sometimes he has to pull us kicking and screaming or yes. digging in our heels. Um, but he redeems every moment of that, mm-hmm. every single moment. Kelly, what would be the one thing that you would leave with our listeners about the the ability to harmonize your ambition and faith and to be addicted to Jesus and, and the walking in the center of his will? Well, there's a Bible verse that's coming to mind. It's seek him first, mm, seek yes. he first the kingdom in all else. It, it, the only thing I can say, and I hope this is a, in, a good answer, but for me, it's real. That verse came alive for me, honestly, in the past year. You know, yeah. that was one of those that I read and I knew seek him first. But then I'm like, OK, I dug deeper into that verse. It's Matthew 6, 33. 33 yep. And it's, you know, seeking him first yeah. instead of, well, let me just launch this course and let me just do this. No, no, no. Wait a minute. Right. Seek him first. Amen. What does that actually look like? Amen. It means waking up in the morning, mm. going to the throne, going to the foot of, feet of Jesus in the morning. Lord, what do you have for me today? Who do you want me to meet? What impact can I make? Are there clients that I that need me? It's that's seeking Him first. He will lay out your business. He'll lay out the next right step for you. I promise, I'm telling you, like I used to strive. I used to create and Mm -hmm. recreate. What am I doing next in my business? Oh my God, because I'm a creator. So I'd be so, you know, I'd be like a squirrel in my head of trying to just do so many things, running around, chasing that nut. (laughs) It's like- That's right. Right? Yeah. And and, And again, I was just so tired, but that verse really came alive to me. As an ambitious woman, that slow down, yeah, and he will in all things will go the way he intends mm-hmm. them to go. Right. When you really seek his will, really yes. seek his face, really seek him in what you're doing. There's nothing the, the worry fades. That's you know, true. we're still gonna have a little bit, but because we're action takers and we have to keep taking right. action, we can't sit back and like, okay, God, like set up my whole day. But no, you have to set up your schedule and do those things. But right. putting the time in with him and mm-hmm. really focusing on being in alignment with his spirit, because you'll again, you know, when you're not in line, that's with right, what he wants for you. Yeah, and yeah, it, that's it, so. That's such beautiful. Ed, advice and and direction because the Bible is our resource. The word is our resource, How, as you had said earlier, right? And yes. Kelly, what comes up for me just as we finish up as you're saying this, it's about, you know, as high achievers, as action takers, we can get addicted to that movement. We can get addicted to what's the next thing I need to create? What's the next thing I need to launch? And there is a transition that happens when we seek him first, mm-hmm. but that addiction to all of that movement and, and, sometimes unintentional action, right? Action for the sake of action Yes. shifts. And then we become addicted to, I don't want to take a step without you, Lord. What is next? Oh, you don't want me to launch anything right now? Oh, you want me to step away from such and such social media? Like we talked about last week with Robin Graham. Oh, you you want me to just sit with what I have? That's uncomfortable. It is. But it is, it is almost like I'm detoxing from that and I'm turning to you, Lord, and I'm going to be addicted to you. And yeah. and like you talk about what the climb really is and yes. having him lead us. Oh, Kelly, so good. I'm so excited. I want, to, I want to, on my desk, I want to share Please. one more thing with you Please because do. I love this. It's just a little prayer that I have on my desk and I yeah. read it all the time because all, all it says is, Lord, thank you for what you've brought me through. Prepare my heart, my mind, and my spirit for the future that you're taking me to. Mm. And that sums up everything we've been talking about because he, yes. we're asking him 
to That's prepare right. your mind, prepare right. your heart for the future, the bright future, the right. blessed future that he's taking you into. And you don't have to be afraid. No. You just don't because no. he's our father that loves us. John three sixteen. God so loved the That's world. Right. He was his only begotten son. Yeah. So, you know, the worry fades, the fear fades in that's just, I, I, it's on my desk. I had to read that because it's I love it. to be in thanks for what you've been through, yes. but get excited about the future that you're heading into. That's right. And know that he's gone ahead of you and he has prepared yes. that way. Yes. Be addicted tenaciously yes. to following him. Amen. Yes. Amen. Oh, Kelly. So good. So good. Tell everybody um, where they can find you. I am, I am on LinkedIn. Every day, so it's just my name, Kelly Tyen, and my uh, my website has a lot of my freebies and my two books. My mastermind program for women is addictedtotheclimb.com. Awesome. Kelly, thank you so much for pouring into the audience today, for being here. It's such a blessing, and I'm so, so grateful that God brought us together. Same. Likewise. So <laughs> blessed. He knows. because I know. Thank you for being here today. Please share this episode with a friend. And until we're together next time, as always, I pray for and encourage you to tune out the world, tune into his truth, tune into his word, and turn up focus as you walk out your mission in the marketplace. I'll see you on the next episode. As an established solopreneur or business owner with a team of employees who's ready to refine or scale your business, you're probably swimming in opportunities, overflowing with ideas, and excited about the possibilities. But you're overwhelmed thinking, how can I set a strategy when I'm trying to run a business and be productive? There are so many ideas and opportunities. How do I decide what's worth pursuing? I don't have time to waste on things that don't align to the vision and mission that God's given me. My client, Jen, felt this way as she sought to scale her business with a God-honoring strategy. Enter my focused and fruitful strategy, Jay. Jen said of her experience, my strategy day with Erin was just what I needed. She helped me look at my current services, dream about the future, and create a plan to grow and scale. Her giftedness as a visionary with an understanding of the day-to-day -day tactical tasks is a magical combination I've never seen before. And she approaches it all from a firm foundation of faith. My strategy day gives you a full day of private coaching with me and my strategic mapping zone of genius while being nourished with good food in a tranquil environment and celebrated for your progress at the end of the day, all in the beauty of Chesapeake Beach, Maryland, or in your location. If you want to bring calm to the chaos, tame the tornado, and silence the squirrels in your business for a clear path forward, visit erinharrigan.com slash strategy day to learn more and schedule time with me. No squirrels were harmed in the making of this message or in the delivery of the strategy day. Thanks for tuning in to Redefining Hustle, Pursuing Success as a Christian Woman each week. I pray this show helps you to see that God made you ambitious, but he didn't make you to do business as usual. Remember to check the show notes for my free resources and other helpful links. If this episode spoke to you, take a screenshot, share it with a friend, or share it on social and tag me. I'm praying for you, friend, that you'll embrace redefining hustle, and in turn, your business will produce much fruit and impact his kingdom in greater ways than you could ever do in your own strength.